All right, let's look at a solving a multivariable equation here. And so ignore that there. All right, so let's start by putting it in. You can just type it. Oops, I need to start with a um, quote mark. And we're going to do f of lowercase g equal oops, 6.674 e to the negative 11 times lowercase m1 times lowercase m2 divided by lowercase r. Type that in and put it on the stack and then under my custom menu I have a solver button that stores that in a variable eq, the default, and then starts the solver. That does not take long to do without that shortcut, but that shortcut's nice. So here, let's say our mass 1 was 10, and our mass 2 was 15, and our radius we didn't know, but we knew it was the square root of 10, so you can just do 10 square root, and then store it in R. And then, if I want to solve for FG, I hit purple, and then FG, and we get our answer. I didn't have to do anything to use these special variable names, they just work. Now, Let's say I want to now use the result of, or I also want to use M2 in a calculation. I mean, it could have been FG. Actually, let's do FG. Let's say that for some times, or some reason, I want to do five times that force of gravity. All I have to do, I'm going to clear this just to make it more clear. Let's see, clear the screen. I can hit this purple, and actually, no, that's solved. Green, and that'll pull it out. So these each are storing a number right now, and if I hit green, it pulls it to the stack, and then I can just say, oh, well, I forget what I said now, but let's say it was five times that amount of gravity. I'd do five and then hit times, and then I have that answer. Way I've stumbled onto it, but so far, if you want to use, here, I'll show you what happens. I want to use FG, so alpha, F, and then I want to lowercase g, and then I want to do equals 6.674, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to shortcut this real quick because what you'll see is it does not like dynamically. So if I hit enter or OK, it, I get a syntax error because it doesn't know what those variables are. So I'm just going to cancel it. Escape. I'm going to go into program. And for that app, you go in here. I'm going to do some more research on this, I think. But anyway, for now, this is the only way I know to do it. You would have to go in here and you have to add it. So you have to type. There, I know you can grab these commands also from like a list, but by the time I find it, I could just type it in. So F, G, I need to define that. I'm going to use an M1. Um, M1, we're going to use an M2. And we're also, since it's lowercase and I'm not in I, whatever for whatever reason the solver runs in the normal mode and only supports uppercase so I have to declare a lowercase not the end of the world but pretty annoying actually all right check it Oop, actually I've got a syntax error because I forgot my semicolon I don't know where it hides I'm gonna look real quick and see if I can find it oh there it is okay so down here in the plus so I get that check it it says yep we're good so I can leave now, and now when I go back to the solver, I can, it won't have any problem with that, or it shouldn't. So F of G equal 6.674 times 10 to the negative 11 times lowercase m1 times lowercase m2 divided by lowercase r. Hit OK. Now that equation's in there. If I want to solve it, I just go to, i got to make sure nothing else is checked, but it's not. And I go in, hit my number. These are like contextual. They, they work with whatever app you're in. So this, oops, 10, 15. This is the square root of 10, but it does let me do that here also. I'm not sure how, how complex it'll let me go, but it works fine. Then hit solve. Great, there's our answer. Now let's say I want to be able to use the value um, three times m2. 
So, or sorry, no, we did five times FG is what we ended up doing. I wrote an example here and didn't do it. So five times FG. So the only way I know is you go back here and you do five times and you actually have to type it. Alpha F, not horrible, but not as convenient as just hitting one key and grabbing it out of memory. There you go. I hit on to another way of doing dynamic, you know, multi-letter variable names that I think might be better for the prime. So let's, let's look at this. The idea is it doesn't matter what mode you're in. Um, it doesn't actually matter what app you have last run. And I will say this does seem to be less permanent than having your variables stored in here like I showed in the other video, but this is easier because it's just, like I said, more dynamic. So if I wanted to put this in, we could say, we could just start by saying take zero and store it in FG. And when you do that, it'll say, do you want to create a variable? Well, that's handy. We'll just say, okay. And we could do that for M1, M2, and R as well. So let's do that. M1, oops went out of order. So let's take, now if we knew that we wanted to start with 10 being our mass 1, that was not what I wanted. We could do that, create that variable, we could take a 15 and store it in M2, create it by hitting OK, and for our radius um, we used the square root of, a, of 10 so I could do square root 10, enter that, and then store it by hitting that stow soft key into R. Now when we go into our solver, oops, we go into the solver here, we can define our equation. We still have to type it in, but so F, oops, I did that wrong, sorry. Alpha F g equal 6.674 e to the negative 11 times m1 times m2 divided by doesn't hurt that it's doing it that way um, r I'm going to square that hit ok and now if we want to solve that we just it's the only one that's checked so I'm going to hit this number, which takes us, these are all, again, um, application sensitive keys. So our variables already are assigned those values, and all we have to do is come here to FG and hit solve. It seemed like a better way to approach that for dynamic, if you're just doing an equation for one time. If you wanted to store it longer term, then I think it still makes sense to define those variables in the program that you plan to use. Hope that's helpful. One other thing to mention on the variables when you dynamically assign them, just so you know, they show up, you hit vars, and they're over here under the, the user variables. So if you go into that menu by hitting toggling over, typing a 1, there they are, R, M2, M1, and this F sub G. That's where those end up living. If you want to get rid of them, you just hit the delete key.